I'm going to demonstrate the installation of Windows 7 on 6th generation Intel Skylake hardware. So for this video I'm going to use an Optiplex 7040, small form factor, shipped with Windows 10 Pro. So I'll use downgrade rights from Windows 10 Pro to clean install Windows 7 Pro, OEM and activate it using OEM system locked pre-installation. So this system has a 6th generation Intel Skylake processor and it has an NVMe solid state drive and actually I replaced the original NVMe solid state drive with a 500 gigabyte Crucial P1. Okay, so in order to boot Windows 7, what we need to do is power up the Dell and press F2 to get to the UFI BIOS setup. And now we need to press the down arrow until we get to secure boot. And then we need to highlight secure boot enable and actually disable it because Windows 7 does not support secure boot. Now we need to go back up the way and we want to go to advanced boot options. And we need to enable legacy option ROMs because we need these for Windows 7. Okay, so once we've enabled both of these settings, we can select apply and save the changes. I'm actually going to go into maintenance and I'm going to go into data wipe and I'm going to wipe all internal drives in this Optiplex 7040. And this means that the solid state drive will effectively be blank. So if I select exit now, the computer will restart and it will restart into the Dell data wipe screen. So not all Dell models have the Dell data wipe. It's actually fairly new, probably introduced with 6th generation Intel Skylake hardware. For older systems, you'd need to use Parted Magic and I've got another tutorial video on using Parted Magic. So I'm going to select continue and then erase. And now the internal drives are securely erased. And that's the UFI by settings correct for Windows 7 now. So obviously in order to install Windows 7, we're going to need some sort of Windows 7 installation media. And if you haven't done so, you need to follow my other video called creating up to date Windows 7 installation media with driver support for up to 6th generation Intel Skylake hardware. Okay, so if you're using a desktop, then I recommend to use the back USB ports for Windows 7 installation. I found that sometimes if you use the front USB ports, the installation fails. So the root cause for this is likely because the back ports are directly incorporated onto the motherboard whereas the front ports normally have some connector connecting them to the motherboard. It doesn't seem to be an issue for Windows 10 installation media, but Windows 7 installation media is sometimes funny when you use the front ports. So I recommend to use the back ports. Okay, so let's power off the Dell and power it up again. And this time I'm going to press F12 to get to the UFI boot menu. So you'll notice to the top it says boot mode is UFI and secure boot is off. Then we just select the USB from the drop down list and select enter. We'll see Windows is loading files and we'll see the starting Windows splash screen. In this screen we'll want to select our language so I'm going to select English and change the time and currency format and keyboard or input method to English United Kingdom. I'm now going to select install now and because I deleted the ei.cfg file from the installation media, I get this ballot box asking me what edition of Windows 7 I want to install. So I'm using downgrade rights from Windows 10 Professional, so I'll need to select Windows 7 Professional. In the next screen we'll need to accept the license agreement, so we can do that and then select next. And in the screen we should select custom advanced. 
And because the storage controllers were incorporated into the installation media, the 500 gig P1 Crucial SSD shows, and it shows as unallocated space because we securely wiped it. If we hadn't securely wiped it, we'd need to select Drive Options Advanced and then select each partition and then select Delete until we had disk zero saying unallocated space. So when we select the unallocated space and then select Next, it will begin to copy the Windows files to the setup and then it will expand the Windows files and continue with the Windows installation. So it will tell us we've got 10 seconds to restart. Now if I hadn't incorporated the NVMe hotfixes, then we would essentially have a flurry of blue screens of death but I've included these hotfixes so the installation proceeds as normal. Okay, so it'll complete the installation and then it'll restart. And we'll see the Dell BIOS splash screen and then the starting Windows splash screen and then it'll check for video performance. So in this screen, we'll need to input our username and computer name. So my name's Philip, so I'm going to type in Philip and it's an Optiplex 7040. So I'll just use that as the computer name. So I'm going to skip inputting a password. I normally do this until I install all the drivers because we need to re restart the computer a lot. I'm going to skip inputting a Windows product key, use recommended Windows update settings and use UK time and region settings. Okay, so I'll be taken to the Windows 7 desktop. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to Start and right click Computer and select Properties. So this will be a check for product activation. And we don't expect the product to be activated because we got asked for the product key during installation and we skipped it. So in order to rectify this, what we're going to do is go to our bootable USB and look at the OEM system locked pre-installation files, cert and script collection. So we select our OEM, which is Dell, and we select seven professional because we're using downgrade rights from Windows 10 professional and we have Windows 7 professional installed. So what we want to do is copy this OEM folder and save it to the C drive directly. Okay, so now we can have a look at its contents. So the slp.bat file, what we want to do is edit it in notepad and we see it's just three lines. The first file installs the cert file the second file inputs the Dell Windows 7 Professional generic OEM system locked pre-installation key and the third line says press any line to continue so we can press spacebar and exit the script. So if we right click computer and select properties now we'll see that Windows is activated and it's activated using OEM system locked pre-installation because the product ID contains OEM 899. And if your system did not have a system license internal code of 2.1, then this activation mechanism would fail and it would say Windows is not activated. So I can just have a look at updates and I can see that the updates that I slipstreamed are incorporated into this Windows 7 installation media. Having all these updates included will save quite a bit of time when we go to patch Windows 7. In order to use Windows 7, we'll need to go ahead and install the system drivers and I'll do this in another tutorial video.